And that is the right way, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. This morning, the Lord woke me up, and he, um, he started my day with this song. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, he does. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, he does. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, he does. For the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, he does. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, he does. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, the Bible tells me so. Yes, Lord, he tells me so. Yes, he does. You got to listen to one thing. When we were toddlers stomping our feet, think it will convince our parents to give us what we want. As we grow as children, we think we can get our way by begging, pleading, and crying. Being independent is not the thing that God wants us to show us. And some of us will say, well, I got all the way here being independent. But what about God? Don't we really need the Lord? Someone to help us, to guide us, someone who will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. For it is not by our own strength that we exist, and it is not because we are clever that we succeed. What we really need is Jesus. He who helps us, he who saves us, and our Lord who rules over all things. He who will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Aliyah, I would like you to please read Psalm 27, 1 through 6. child, Lord. I thank you, God, because I will hold my head high. It takes a lot of reference in the scripture. God had me personally have Aaliyah read it today for a reason. Aaliyah's been going through a lot of pain lately. And the one thing 
I thank God for with Aaliyah is she holds her head high, Lord. No matter what situation comes, and no matter what storm comes. God gives us the here we need. God gave us a Savior when he gave us Jesus. For our efforts to gain independence, he held us to a sinful nature. And while we tried to gain our own place in the world, God gave us his only son, so that we could be back to the place he intended us to be all along. See, a secure and loving place where we can draw near and onto him in a true and loving relationship under God's right to him. Now, David identified God in these ways in the scripture. He talks about the light of my salvation and the strength of my life. David called God his light. He says that the Lord was his salvation and the strength of his life. Such powerful words to describe an awesome God. My light my salvation, and the strength of my life. Amen? Amen? God's presence in David's life in those ways meant something else was removed. Fear. Fear. We all have fear. And when we come into a relationship with God through Christ, the fear we once carried is now removed. And we all experience fear. It can come upon our heart suddenly, or it can build itself up slowly, tormenting us. And fear comes in all shapes and sizes. They are small, physical, or spiritual. But you must call on to the Lord for peace. Peace. You must separate yourself from the worries of this world and focus on the kingdom of God. In Psalms 27.1, David gives us insight into how God himself has provided salvation in such a way that he removes any fear we might have. God shows us his light, and not just the light to lead us down the path of righteousness, but also the light that leads to perfection and salvation. Jesus is the light of salvation. He is the light. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of the light. God's salvation brings us back into a relationship with him. It eliminates the ultimate fear of eternal separation. The salvation that God gives us is forever. For Jesus is the strength that we can trust. The Lord is the light, the salvation that we need, and the strength that we cannot go without, that we can trust. And we gain his forgiveness and love and life because God himself is to us. So remember that God isn't just a remover of fears. He is a God of goodness and the confidence we all need. He is a righteous God, a Lord who reigns over us with wisdom and mercy. And though we may be fearful as we walk in a world full of pain and sorrow, it is God's salvation that gives us our hope. Hope. The Lord is our confidence. When we see the storms ahead, and we face the harsh winds and the high waters. And just as David trusted in God, we all must know that the Lord is much more powerful than any of our troubles. Trust in the Lord. You must trust in his infinite glory and power. For just as David trusted in God, we must have faith that our love for God gives us the victory of over all of us. And we must recognize what the enemy is and not take him lightly. For he and all that follow him, they are smeared and stained by all that is good. We must look to God as a salvation and stronghold. For in Jesus, we will not be defeated. And we have a sure confidence when we stand in Christ, our Savior. And we all have to choose where we will place our confidence. Do we place it in our own strength? Or do we trust it in the power of God? For what have we? ever achieve without the goodness of God. It says in Psalms 27, 4 through 6, Submit to the Lord, my brothers and sisters, and dwell in a home of God's presence. Prepare and pray. Prepare and pray. And create your own room within your house. Kick out all that does not come by God. Meditate within each wall and make room for the Lord of hosts, for he shall bring you peace and and joy. For has not Jesus already done everything for our salvation? 
And has not the Lord given us everything we need for freedom from fear and our confidence in victory over our enemies? See, God is our security throughout his presence. He reigns over all powers, principalities, and strongholds. And we should humble ourselves and be eternally grateful to the Lord. For he is our light, our salvation, and the strength of our lives. This morning when I woke up, God had showed me many things through my children that I teach, through everything that I see in God. And I asked to pray this morning, God, get rid of the enemies. Secure a house for everyone that comes today in this, win in this window, in this world. Secure a place. Meditate and give God the glory. Kick out the enemies. Surround your house full of God. Meditate. Pray and make a room for yourself where you can meditate and be closer to God. Our relationships are so much more important and God sees all and knows all. So I ask even my students today, the children, prepare a place in your house and pray. Meditate. Ask God for what you want and want blessed in your family. Ask him and pray for him daily and ask him to guide your family each and every moment. Elders, I ask you to do the same thing. Meditate and find a place in your room that is all you and God. Meditate, pray, and give him all the glory. See, because he is our light. He is our salvation. And he is the strength of our lives. Jesus himself is our Lord.
think that's very important to me as well. And I ask that he watches over my children in my classroom, protects them and guides them in every decision that they make, blesses them with peace and not anger. God, I ask that you bless each and every one of you today. I say a prayer for every one of you today and every day. I say a prayer for my brothers and sisters as well every day when they're out and about. But I ask you today to prepare, like Aaliyah says, that prayer room. Meditate in it, even if it has to be all day, or even just for 30, 45 minutes today. Give him all the glory and praise. I ask that if Apostle Destiny and Apostle Alter have anything they'd like to add, they would feel free to come on up. Bless you, Apostle. Bless you, Ms. Lady. Bless everyone who came to hear the Lord's word today. Thank you for such a wonderful sermon and a wonderful word. Uh, she mentioned something that was uh, a real good thought, which is, is what good have we ever achieved without God? We haven't. Um, the Lord showed me the other day, you know, through my heart, I realized all of the things that go on in my life and everyone else's life that I'm around 24-7, even you, God. And I say, Lord, fix me because I'm broken. We should all say that. Because every single one of us is broken in some way, shape, form, or fashion. The Lord continues to show me humbleness in every way. And the same way she said, you know, pray for someone today. Please do. When you pray, pray for the lost. Pray for the blind. Pray that the Lord brings them back so that they draw near unto him so that they can be blessed just as you are. The Lord shows me that each and every single one of you elders that's in here right now, you are lights in this place. He puts you on the rock in the shore. And there are people that are drowning constantly that cannot see the way. And the only example they have is you guys. Remember, you represent the Lord. You don't represent yourself. Don't be yourself. There are too many people that are, there, that are themselves and, and it's, it's, they're broken. Remember who you are in the Lord. He said his name will not be defamed. It will, he will not be slandered. So you represent him as a light. As someone standing on that rock on the shore. And there are people drowning. Pray for them. Pray also for yourself. Again, ask him to fix what's broken. Ask him to heal what needs to be healed. But don't do it so that you can be yourself. Do it that, so that you can be a better person in the Lord. You are women of God. God has called each and every single one of you guys. Remember that. That is an honor. Because none of us deserved it when he went to that cross. And I thank God for the children that are here today. Bless them. But may the Lord bless you all. For you walk with him. You continue to trust in him. You continue to believe in him. Because he is all you have. That is it. Amen. Amen. Bless each and every single one of you. Ask him about the next. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day, Lord, and we thank you for our prayer in each and every moment that you bless us, Lord. Lord, we know that your son, Jesus Christ, will give you all the glory and praise. We thank you for blessing each and every one to come in today, Lord, to hear the word that you've given, Lord. And then we thank you for blessing their health, blessing their bodies, and blessing their spirits today, Lord. Lord, we ask that you send them out today, Lord, giving them the light to give to others, Lord, through them, through your son, Jesus Christ, that you've given. And Lord, we ask that you allow them to bless and nourish and give each and every one the word of God that you need, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you bless the ones that are not here today, Lord. Bless them and send their way the word any way you see them. And Lord, we ask that you bless the children today, Lord. Bless their minds and bless their bodies and bless their spirits, Lord. Letting them fully meditate in God in you. And Lord, we ask that you bless each and every one today in this room today, Lord. Watching over them, protecting them, Lord. And thank you for the peace, Lord, that you give each and every one. Thank you for the love that you give each and every one of us, Lord. 
Well, we know this is because of you, Lord. Everything that is you, Lord, nothing else. And Lord, we give you everything that we are and everything that we have, Lord. And we thank you, God. We thank you for blessing us to come and fellowship with you today, Lord. And then we ask this in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.